I was born like 10 meters from the river. And I usually say I was born by the, on the banks of the river and I'm still there. It's all about trout. It's been like that since I was a kid. My father used to take me fishing when I was very small. And somehow, even then, the beauty of trout, I, I, spots, the spots, the red spots, that, that's, that, that, that caught me, that caught my eye. And I mean, I was six, seven years old. And from times, the most beautiful thing in the world was trout. And then I grew with it, and uh, when, I, when my father passed away, I was only 14, um, I got the fly rods, of course, so we, I had already started, but from then on, I started fly fishing, like as a teenager, for real. And of course, I was born by this river, uh, with a lot of grayling in it. So I fished my share of grayling, of course, as well, but it was always the trout I was after, all of the time. So, and, uh, well, if you look at me now, this is what I do. It's my life, my passion, my work. As I work as a fly fishing guide, I got a fly shop and all that. So it's all, it's all about trout. And I guess it'll, it'll always be like that. We have a big lake down by Mura, Asila. It's, it used to be, it used to be like a big trout in the lake, and it's a migrating trout, very big. So it used to migrate up here to Eldalen and up in the small tribes like Rote Elven and and Rimman and uh, Rellan and Swan. Uh, but in the 1950s, the end of the 50s there, uh, development struck and uh, the hydropower company came in and they built a dam, but well, that's above from here, further up, and another one. And we were still okay since the tribs were still open. So the trout could migrate up and migrate down to the river when they had spawned up here until that day in the 60s when they built the first dam between the tribs and the lake and that was it for spawning and then they built another one and another one so that's three dams so that's what happened so unfortunately the trout declined in numbers of course from being tens of thousands down to be a couple of hundred as we have it now so that, that, that was tough uh, it's, it's really tough for me being quite old. I remember when I was a kid fishing down there, as I told you, uh, down in Mora, and uh, I remember seeing those 
10 pound trout or 12 pound trout jump. You could see them from several hundred meters away. They were airborne like that. I remember that. And I hooked a few. Uh, but my gear always broke. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that was tough, of course. The biggest dream actually would probably be sitting here where I am now. Uh, having the little tributary Rotelven in the background to yet again see a five or sorry a ten pound trout pass here on his way to his spawning grounds. That would of course be the dream. There were a few guys that realized about 11, 12 years ago that what, what, what's happening, what's happening here, what are they doing, where are, where, where's, the, where's the trout, what happened. And we, of course we knew what happened, but back in the days, I mean, it was work probably, it was the economy for small, small places, small cities, uh, and I don't think they really knew, because because uh, he, he just, he's, he's just looking for trout, yeah. Uh, I don't think they knew because, of course, the hydropower company said, okay, we're going to use the water, but you can keep the fishing. Yeah. And people back then didn't know that if you take the water and use it, you kill the fishing. Uh, so, some years ago, uh, a couple of good friends of mine decided to this is not this is not this is not fair we got to do something about this and uh, i jumped on the train of course and uh, several others did and it's been hard work for a long time and uh, 2017 that was 11 years from when we started we went to court against the hydropower company and we won so today they have to build fishways in these three power plants that are on the way up here to the spawning rounds. So actually the first one is set to be, uh, be in work now, before this summer. So it's really close now. And if that one, that, that'll go on for a couple of years and then we're gonna build the other two. So within four years, we're gonna have hopefully a trout freeway all the way up down again. So I hope I can I, I hope I can live to see that.
I could tell you, I could tell you about the hotel trout. We call it the hotel trout. It was uh, pretty cool. It was. Uh, I was out fishing with a friend of mine. It was actually up in this little river, and uh, as one of my friends, he picked me up after work in the fly shop. Went up fishing, and just for an hour, and just when we were about to leave home, I flip out the last. CDC and elk as my last cast for the day, next to a to a cliff, and we could both see, like in slow motion, this yellow belly turning under the fly, and I missed it. And you know that feeling—you stop breathing for a while, and uh, so we made a few more casts, <laughs> a few more casts, and. Uh, he just didn't show again, uh, so and I had to get back. I had to get up early and work, so I had to guide the next day. And uh, Yoki, my friend, well, he said, "Well, we got we got a meeting, you know, tomorrow." Yeah, I know. There's a mission there, so wait, come on. <laughs> so he picked me up again after work, and uh, and we went up. You know, I thought about the trout all night. Yeah, and all day. So I we went up there. No, sorry, I was wrong. He went up, because he had a day off. And then he said, come up when you're here. Uh, when you finished work, so I did. I got up and I walked through the woods, come up and I see him out there on that spot. And when I got out of the woods, he smiled and he shouted, I didn't cast on him. And I answered, I know. He's a good friend, so we don't do that. So anyway, I got down there. I stood in the water for a while and uh, waited and waited. And I had the same fly on and I made that cast. And this yellow flat come up and takes the fly. Yeah. And we put that one in, took a couple of quick shots, put it back. I was sitting on my I never forget it. I was sitting on my knees in the water, just, you know, that, that feeling. Oh, man, we did that. Somebody kn knocks on my shoulder and turn around. Here comes this can of beer and a cigar from my friend. Good friends are good. Uh, so I was sitting there. We shared that beer and shared the cigar. And eventually we rose and we looked down. And we didn't look at each other. I, I was looking down on the river. And my friend, Jokke, he was looking down the river. And then he says very silently to me, you're going to fish more? And without thinking, I said, no, no way. Fuck no. So we just looked at each other, smiled, and we walked away. And there, 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 was, an, there was an hour drive up, an hour back home, so at least. So we went back home and uh, ended up uh, in the hotel bar with a hamburger and a bunch of beer, stealing our fishing clothes. Well, well that, that, that's where the name came from, the hotel trout, because that's where we ended up. Drunk, actually, and happy. I usually say I was born by the, on the banks of the river, and I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs>